I'm Tom Davenport. I am a um, professor, I guess a distinguished professor at Babson College, uh, researcher at the MIT Initiative on the Digital Economy, um, a senior advisor um, to Deloitte's analytics and cognitive practice, and, and that's basically um, it for my activities. Great. Well, Tom, thank you so much for making time to be on Humans of Data Science. It's truly an honor to have you on here. And thank you again for writing the forward for the disruptors. That book is actually going to go live either today or tomorrow. So I'm Oh, great. Congratulations. I'm yes. excited. I am a human, so I'm very appropriate for this um, show. <laughs> yes. And speaking of books, I wanted to congratulate you on your latest book, The AI Advantage. Thank you. I, I wanted to talk more about, you know, kind of why you wrote it and what can readers expect to get out of that book? Okay. Yeah. So I had written another book related to AI a couple of years ago with um, a woman named Julia Kirby, and it was called Only Humans Need Apply. Um, and it was really about what happens to jobs and skills um, with regard to AI. Very strong focus on, you know, augmentation, this idea that that we won't see large scale loss of jobs, but a lot of people working with um, AI as kind of colleagues in a way. So we talked about the various ways that you could add value to, to AI in that book. And normally I would have written the uh, first book on AI um, from an enterprise perspective, but a couple of years ago there weren't that many enterprises doing much, but now there are a lot. So this new book is about enterprise AI and sort of what, um, what are companies actually doing with AI? What technologies are they using? How are they kind of managing it? How ambitious are their, their goals? Um, what is it, what has it meant so far for jobs and skills within um, their organizations and, you know, kind of what, social and ethical issues they are dealing with. So that's basically what it's about. Very interesting. And then, so you mentioned enterprises. Are you focused on any specific industries? I generally work across industries, but certainly there are some that are more aggressive with, with AI than others. So I, um, financial services and tech, slash telecom and pharmaceuticals, I say something about in the book, and some in some companies in consumer products, Procter & Gamble, I think is one of the more aggressive in that area, Pfizer and pharmaceuticals I talk about, um, uh, some in healthcare, um, I start the book with some um, <clears throat> stories about uh, big efforts in AI and how they turned out. And um, uh, one is MD Anderson Cancer Center, one is DBS Bank in Singapore, and one is Amazon. So, but a lot of examples throughout. Yeah, I think that helps when you're reading a book and you can have examples that you can relate to. Like when you said Amazon, you know, I'd love to read more about that and see how they're using AI. Yeah, well, they're. They're really using it all over the place, but um, the point I try, the point I used them to make was, um, and this is a kind of a general point in the book that um, you can you can go for these really aggressive moonshots with AI, or you can um, kind of pick the low hanging fruit, do less ambitious applications, and. So I give a couple of examples of MD Anderson and, and DBS Bank where their moonshots didn't work out terribly well, but their low hanging fruit is working very well. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, because I thought some people might say, well, it's because they're not that technically sophisticated at, at those organizations. But, well, there's nobody more technically sophisticated than Amazon. Yeah. And even there, it turns out they have a couple of moonshots. They've been moderately successful, I would say. The jury's still out on one big one, which is the kind of drone-based delivery, but they're very successful in terms of the low-hanging fruit, and Jeff Bezos said that, you know, the vast bulk of what we do with machine learning is 
um, what did he say, quietly but meaningfully improving core operations. So kind of basically an extension of analytics uh, work, really. Got it. And so where can people buy this book? I'm assuming Amazon's one of the places. <laughs> yes. Uh, Amazon, MIT Press is the publisher, so you can buy it through there. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm yeah, and, you know, bookstores, I suppose, but I think it's fairly um, widely available wherever books are sold, as they say. So. <laughs> Great. Um, I also wanted to congratulate you on your recent nominee, well, selection as the top voice of 2018 on LinkedIn for technology. Um, I read your, your kind of snippet there, and the, one of the questions I guess they asked you was, uh, what was the most interesting story you read in 2018? And your response was about the Cambridge Analytica and Facebook. So I just wanted to hear your thoughts on kind of why you selected that one. Well, I think it's really been, for somebody like me who's interested in data science and analytics and AI, it's really been um, a game changer in that I think before that, at least in the U.S., not so much in Europe, but in the U.S., we all thought of analytics as this cool thing that was mostly a positive force in business and society, and um, it was, I think, pretty um, widely recognized that the future was going to be more analytical and so on. Um, but after that, people have started to say, huh, you know, this stuff maybe isn't so good. After all, I mean, obviously, it's not the only problematic example of data science and AI and so on. Um, and I, my personal belief, and I talk about this in the book, um, is that it's not that AI caused the problem, it's just that AI couldn't solve the problem. And Facebook probably relied um, too heavily yeah. on AI to try to identify you know, fake news and news from Russia and so on. Um, but uh, it's really changed things so that now, you know, people, when I'm speaking or when I'm teaching, People ask about, well, you know, what, what's the ethical dimension of this? And how do I avoid going to work for a company that uses data science for, you know, the wrong reasons? Mm -hmm. And it's really changed the dialogue quite dramatically. Yeah, I, that, that's a great point. I'm actually just currently working on a course that will hopefully raise awareness about the need for considering ethics in data science projects. And so I'm coming across all of that now as well. That's why I wanted to ask you about this, um, that article. So. Yeah, I mean, I, I think um, we had known for a while about this idea of algorithmic bias, which um, uh, I think Kathy O'Neill was the first to really write much about. But um, now I think, you know, there are a whole lot of different aspects of, of, of analytical, data science, AI related, you know, um, ethical issues that um, I've written about some with, with the cat y'all at Deloitte, who's, you know, they're trying to focus on that to a substantial degree and um, I would probably write some more. I mean, I tend to be personally oriented more toward the positive side of all of this, but I think we now have to think much more about limiting the the negative side too. Yeah, I agree. It, it's better to think about all the positives, but I guess we can't <laughs> ignore the. Yeah, and that, the same was true with kind of analytics and information management in general. I've always been, um, not to overuse sports analogies, but I've always been mostly focused on kind of an offense oriented person. How do you make more money, cure more diseases, yeah. you know, do good things with, with information and data, um, but now more and more i think there's this defense side how do you avoid security risk and ethical risk and um fraud and you know all these sort of downside things so um we have to play defense a lot too yeah um okay so tom what is a goal that you have for yourself either personal or professional for the next like 12 to 18 months uh, well, I've written 20 business books, which one could argue is too many. Um, so my, my big goal is to write a novel and my 
I've already outlined most of the chapters, but I haven't really started writing seriously yet. It's um, going to be about robot football, um, American football, not uh, real football, or some might say soccer. Um, mm -hmm. Because, you know, I'm an American. I grew up with American football. And I think there's going to be this desire to, you know, not see people turn their brains to mush as uh, American football tends to do with concussions and so on. So this book is about um, how robot football really got started and took off at MIT. I'm also tired of, you know, all the, um, I grew up in um, Alabama for part of my childhood and all, all my relatives went to Alabama and I'm tired of schools like Alabama getting all the praise for their football teams and I want you know the nerd schools like MIT and <laughs> Carnegie Mellon and Caltech and so on to start to get some praise so they're featured quite prominently in the in the book um, and there's some interesting kind of international intrigue and theft of intellectual property and so on as well. So writing a book, a novel is certainly my biggest professional goal for the next year or so. Wow, that sounds like a really interesting book. I would definitely pick that one up. Well, thank you. But unfortunately, I've never written a novel before, so I have no idea how good it will be. So. My husband's actually writing his first. Um, it's, a, really? it's a fiction that takes place in some galaxy alien type of it's it's a work oh, it's, yeah yeah mine is set in the future but only like three or four years in the future now. i was going to take five six years but yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right well tom the last question i have for you today is what do you like to do in your spare time uh i like to sail and i like to um ride motorcycles, although my wife bothers me about it so much that I don't have one at the moment. I like to ride bicycles, but not quite as much. And I um, like to play tennis, and I um, go for a long walk with my dog every day. And so, and I, I don't like frozen tundra, so I generally go someplace warm in the winter with my wife and travel from there. So um, uh, that's basically it, I would say. Um, I, you know, I'd like to say something more exciting, but I can't think of anything at the moment. <laughs> uh, motorcycles is pretty exciting. You're actually probably the fourth or fifth person on the show who said they get on motorcycles. And these are, you know, all data scientists. So it's very interesting that there's a some correlation. Yeah, I want to get an electric motorcycle. Um, or, or you know, there's this new thing that I'm really excited about called Arkimoto. It's a kind of an electric tricycle or whatever, but it's like a car, only it's much smaller and uses hardly any energy. And I really want to get one of those. I'm on the list, but it's taking a long time for them to make them. As long as your wife lets you write it after you get it. She, she, she's already registered some complaints, but... Um, <laughs> It at least has a cage surrounding you, so I'm thinking that'll be safer. All right. Well, Tom, thank you so much again for being on Humans of Data Science. This has been awesome. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Good luck with your, your new book. Thank you.